everybody, it's your old pal Mike. Welcome back to the channel and to the pedal board bonanza part two. This is where we're going to finish up the board that we started in the last part. And thank you so much for bearing with me. I know that uh, splitting it into two parts was uh, not ideal, but it took so long to finish this video and get everything out and uploaded uh, that it ended up being like 3.30 or four in the morning by the time I finished. So yeah, I, I definitely needed a break. But for this part of the video, we are going to pick up right where we left off, which was with the Small sound, big sound, fuck overdrive, taking us in to the Keeley Loomer. The Keeley Loomer is a fantastic fuzz pedal, but before we dive into it, I just, I just wanna talk about stacking pedals because these two are a perfect example of pedals that work great in tandem. Now, in the beginning of this video, you were hearing a passage from a song by my good friend Callie Kazoo called Take a Dive. It's one of my favorite of her songs. And when we performed that live, I use the fuck overdrive as my basic verse overdriven tone. It's perfect for laying back a little bit, but it still has enough grit to feel full and big and exciting. However, after the verse, there is a riff that kicks in. It's maybe my favorite part of the song. And for that, I stack the loomer right on top. The loomer is the perfect companion when you want a bigger, fuller, girthier, more present, more fuzzy, more chaotic sound to match something like the fuck overdrive. Fuzzes and overdrives are great together, and these two together are just further proof that certain pedals employed together can be formidable. The next pedal in my signal chain is the fantastic Keeley Loomer pedal. It is the uh, my Bloody Valentine shoegaze sound in a box. It does it all, it's really fantastic. It's got a great fuzz tone. <laughs> So it's got fuzz, but it also has onboard reverb that you can choose to put before or after the fuzz. So, and I think I've got it before. Yeah, that's before. If you want like a really good gliding shoegaze sound, like this pedal can absolutely do that. Not bad. Uh, I'm still not sure if I like reverb before or after the fuzz in this case. It's something I'm still playing with and I'm grateful that I can play with it on the same pedal. Uh, normally when I'm doing those sounds live, I will just kick on a long tailed reverb from the blue sky with the decay set fairly high and I'll, I'll just do it that way. <laughs> I like that better and that's just me but the loomer is a fantastic pedal and it's a great way for you to play with that too like you can really get some good stuff out of that thing the next pedal in my signal chain is one that I actually had a hand in the development of the Ernie Ball volume pedal from watching the video this far you will notice that we have gone from fuzz to compression to octave to fuzz distortion overdrive, more fuzz, and just now we're hitting the volume pedal. And that is on purpose because I want the full sound of my pedals and fade that in rather than fading in, um, you know, the amount of signal that's hitting the overdrive. I don't want to back off the amount of distortion I have uh, from the volume pedal. I can do that just fine on my guitar. So that is, that is important to me, is retaining a consistent sound when I'm fading in, for example.
That's just how I like it. Now this particular volume pedal is the new Ernie Ball VP Tuner, and I actually had a hand in the development process of this one. I was on the product testing team, and I got to have this for many months before they were released. Um, and this is the final version that you all can go buy. There was a lot of a lot of work involved in making it as good as it was. And the development team, they are amazing people and they are so kind. And they uh, combed through my like five pages of email feedback um, and arrived at something that is super dependable and super usable and it sounds good too. I really like what this does to my sound. It's got a really fantastic buffer in it and uh, you know, I really just, I can't say enough. And I realized that uh, out of all the pedals on my board, it does the least as far as an effect goes, but I just really like volume pedals. I like how they feel. I like controlling them with my feet. Um, and I've always liked a pedal for swells more than a volume knob. The next pedal in my signal chain is the fantastic Earthquaker Rainbow Machine, a pedal that I still only barely understand, uh, but it is one of the very few choruses I've enjoyed. And you'll notice on my board, there's not a lot of modulation. And that's just because I don't really care for it all the time. And if I need it, I've got it in the Helix or I've got it in some other pedals that I have laying around. But the uh, Rainbow Machine. <laughs> It just sounds really good and it's super usable in every setting I've used it on. And also it has the magic button, which is. It's just fun to have. It's good. If you've got a crescendo happening, kick that thing on. It's fun. I've only just scratched the surface of that pedal, but it is one of my favorites. So the Rainbow Machine runs directly into my sparkly Line 6 DL4. This is one of the 20th anniversary editions, um, which was given to me by Line 6, and I don't know how I got on that list, but I am forever grateful, especially because the Line 6 DL4 that I was using at the time died uh, on me, and that was no good at all. So very thankfully and very gratefully, that was replaced with this one, and this has been on the board ever since then, and it is fantastic. Um, I mean, if you've ever played a DL4, you know it. It's literally no different except for the casing, but it's, it's just a fantastic. <laughs> Nothing fancy about it, really. I've got a, what kind of settings do I have here? Got a little slap back on here. Not much to it, just a great DL4 is all. Now we've come to the reverb section of my board and you might be wondering why does he have two on his board and that is because I love reverb and I love having options and uh, so I always keep the flint on. That's my basic reverb sound. It's short, it's sweet. It's not too in the way, it doesn't muddy things up. It's just there for a little bit of ambiance. Uh, especially when I'm running through uh, an amp that has no effects like my satellite. My satellite Hellion, one of the best amps I've ever owned. In fact, the best amp I currently own. Uh, it is great, uh, but it has nothing on it, no onboard reverb. So th I put this on when I feel like the room needs a little. So nothing too crazy. Now the blue sky is there just in case I need to bump up the reverb level. For instance, if, I, uh, if I'm playing something surfy and I need more spring. nice spring to it.
little mysterious stranger for you. The other thing that the Blue Sky does and the exact reason that I bought it was it does that kind of cavernous, hollow, cigarose style reverb that I couldn't get from any other pedal at the time, at least nothing that I understood. And that is the main reason that I bought it. I have a guitar that's set up for bow and I desperately want to play along with those records. Like I think Cigarose is an incredible band, one of the best bands ever. So if I turn up the decay and set the mix higher, I get something that sounds like this. Anyway, you get something that sounds like that, and uh, that just makes me happy. So that's why I have two reverbs on my board. I, I'm sure I don't need both of them, but it just, it just helps to have them both at the ready all the time. And uh, also the tremolo on the Strymon Flint is fantastic. <laughs> all the CV Ray Vaughn you're gonna get out of me. <laughs> and this brings me to the last two pedals on my board and they are just as important as everything else that came before. The second to last pedal on my board is the Ernie Ball Expression Tremolo and I was also on the uh, product testing team for this one too and not to toot my own horn or anything uh, but beep beep because I <laughs> I definitely had a hand in making this as crazy as it can get. The original model that they sent me for feedback on had about half the rate available, and this one, oh, it just goes crazy. <laughs> this is one of my favorite pedals because it, it puts the tremolo in a form factor that you don't often see it in. You don't see it in sort of a wah-style enclosure, but this... Having the treadle enables me to control the rate on the fly, and I love that because, man, does it get super weird. Like, check this out. This is a part that I wrote for my friend Vanessa a long time ago. Being able to control that sound on the fly is fantastic for me. I love playing with rate. I love messing with uh, tempo in a song, and, and this helps. Now the Expression Trem has a bunch of different sounds, but I've chosen the most choppy and weird version, uh, just because that's, that's what I'm into. So if you get one of these and you use it for nothing other than ending songs or having a crescendo in your set and you want some choppy weirdness, go ahead. That's perfectly valid. That's what I use it for. And I use it in tandem with the Buster that is at the end of my board. This is a great boost pedal with its own unique sound by a company called Beatronics. Uh, and every pedal in their lineup is fantastic. I have plenty of them. I've got the Royal Jelly, which is a fantastic overdrive and fuzz workstation. I've got this one. I've got the Swarm, which is a, 
uh, just a wild mess of a pedal. Like you need to check that out. And I don't fully understand that one either. But the Buster is essentially a boost with its own sound. And uh, you know, the thing about boosts is that really at the end of the day, what you're demoing is your amp and how it responds to being slammed at the front end. Uh, but the Buster has a great sound. <laughs> I will most often employ the Buster as just a straight up boost, and you all know how that goes. Like you either want more overdrive in your signal, or you're about to take a rip roar and lead in the middle of a song. Like <laughs> it's kind of a drastic lead boost, but uh, hey, it works live. The other great thing about the Buster was that it's got two preset volumes and you can switch between them using the secondary switch. So while I have one set for a boost, I have the other set to cut volume completely. And when you pair that with weird controlled chaos, like so, That's fantastic. That's a lot of fun. Now, I am at the end of my signal chain and I'm running it all into the Helix and I'm getting ready to record. So I hope that this video has been fun for you. It's been fun for me to just take a, take a look at all my pedals and walk down memory lane as I prepare to make some tracks for Vanessa. And looking at my board now, I am excited to dig in and re-familiarize myself with all of these great sounds that I have on tap. And I'm even more excited now uh, that I get to put them to tape. So yeah, this has been a lot of fun. I, I really am so excited that I got to share this with you. And hopefully this inspires you to pull out some pedals, play with signal chain order, uh, go nuts. Because this is one of my favorite things about the electric guitar in that I don't think you can really fully master this thing. And not saying that I'm a master, I'm fine. Uh, but with all of the outboard effects you can add to an electric guitar, like there is an endless array of tones that you can get and you can employ in your own fun noise making. So really go have some fun. Like go have fun. What are you doing watching me? Go have some fun on your own. Anyway, thank you so much for indulging me in this very weird meandering video. Uh, it really felt good to take a look at my board again and remember all the good times I've had and the good sounds I've made. And hopefully some of these sounds inspire you too. Uh, I will leave links to these pedal companies in the description below. And if you heard something you like, well, why not patronize them? Uh, in any case, I have some recording to do and I'm gonna get to that, but uh, I really appreciate you. It feels good to have you all coming back to the channel time and time again. And hopefully this inspires you to uh, dig out your own pedals and make some mayhem of your own. Anyway, I hope this video was fun for you. It was definitely fun for me. Uh, a great way to cap off Mike's week of fun as I enjoy myself for the first time in a little while. <laughs> Man, oh, I'm excited to be off the clock and I hope that you are taking care of yourself and each other. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more weirdness uh, as Mike's week of fun continues. Take care.
I love that.